Hi, thank you for joining us today. This is Dina at Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Welcome to Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Remnant Nation Radio is a prophetic and poetic view of the sojourning bride of Christ in the world today. Hi, thank you for joining me today. This is Dina, and we're at the Remnant Nation channel with this new episode. Before I begin, I want to remind you of the Dream Journal website, newwinepouring.com with one W. And at the top of any one of the pages we come to is a Contact Us link that if we click on it, will take you to a correspondence page where I would love to hear from you. So if you have any questions or comments, something you'd like to share, that's where you would go. We also have Thursday night conference calls that you're invited to listen into. You can go to the contact page and just say Thursday night conference call registration. When you register the first night, then you listen in. And then if you're interested in becoming a prayer panel partner, then you can uh, register again for that. So all you have to do is go to the contact us link at the newwinepouring.com contact us page or just email thepouring at gmail.com. We'd love for you to come in with us and join us and uh, be a part of the conference call or just to listen in. So just express what you're interested in doing and we can go from there. We're going to talk today about something that is always on my mind. It always should be on your mind because we always need to be aware that we are in a war. And that Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. And that he made an open display, a show, when he was nailed to the cross. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, he wrought for us a great salvation. Such a great salvation that we are told not to neglect it. Make sure that you understand it in its entirety. It's not just that the Lord went to the cross to take our sins, to be in our stead, to take our place, okay, so that we wouldn't have to die the death penalty, which would mean separation from God for eternity. Not only did he do that, he also shed his blood for the remission of sins. So Jesus took care of the sin problem for mankind, for all of the children born before and after that, Jesus went to the cross. And so by the remission of our sins by the shed blood of Jesus out on the cross. We've been cleansed from all unrighteousness. If we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and we speak with our mouth that he is Lord, okay, that he is God and he died for us, if we believe that and confess it with our mouth, then we are saved. That's what salvation consists of because people do not confess things publicly that they don't believe. It's usually against our human nature to embarrass ourselves in any way, shape, or form. For many people, publicly confessing faith is kind of embarrassing uh, because there's a lot of people out there that don't agree with that. They say that God is, is not real. Um, they say that God is dead, or they say that he's an invisible fairy tale. And so to come against public opinion and speak forth what it is that you believe takes a lot of um, dedication. And that's exactly what God desires for us to do when we believe. He, Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father. So he is not ashamed of us and we should never be ashamed of him. If we're ashamed of him, we're not worthy of him. And so every one of us is going to have to stand before God for the actions that we have done, for the actions we've done in our life. And uh, so either 
we confess our sin before God and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness or everything that we've ever done is going to follow us right there in that day of judgment. And believe me, nobody wants to have that kind of situation. You really do want to have your sins washed away. Everything that you've ever done wrong, um, every mistake you've ever made, if you confess that before God, he says, I am faithful. I am faithful. If you are faithful, if you would just be faithful to confess your sins, he says, I'm faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So if you want to know how to get past some of the things that you do that you don't like doing, that you are not uh, proud of, the best way to do it is confess before God, ask forgiveness, turn away from it, making steps to turn away from it. But he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will cleanse you from that stain of that thing that you keep going back to. And so he's a very present help in times of trouble but we are in a war we've been in a war from the very beginning um, the seed of the woman will crush his head and Jesus was the seed of the woman that came and crushed his head okay so the only thing that is left viable uh, in the kingdom of Satan is his lies is his deception uh, if we believe the word of God, we know that Jesus came to destroy the work of the enemy, that he came to give us life and that more abundant, and that's the truth of God's word, with this great salvation of our mind, body, soul, and spirit, and it's completed when we uh, continue to walk in faith and believe and trust God for our very lives. We believe and trust God with our very lives um, and our confession brings us into a covenant with him. I mean, we get to have a covenant with him. Uh, he did his part already. We just need to do our part. And you know what is really great about that is that we don't have to do it by ourselves. And we don't have to um, obey God by our own strength because we can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens us right? So we're covered at every end. We're covered. We, every weakness that we have, he says where we are weak, that he is strong. And so he is the author and the finisher of our faith. We have no excuse. You have no excuse, oh man. We have no excuse. We are seated in high places with him, far above all principalities, powers, dominions, and mights, and wickednesses, in high places the earth is his footstool and the heaven is is his throne now look at that we're seated with him in high places the earth is his footstool and the heavens is his throne and when we obey God as ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ when we go where he would have us to go in the strength and power and ability that he's given us okay in the authority that he's given us to take land, take ground, to take our inheritance, to uh, push back the lying spirits, because he said, cast out all devils. We, in his name, we can cast out devils in his name, okay? When we do that, we take ground and we expand the kingdom of God. Every one of us, you know, we're like that yeast that's put in the dough, uh, in, the, in the good sense of it, because there's a negative sense to that too. Yeast can be a sin introduced into the dough, and it just spreads, okay? But we could also be salt and light in the earth, and that also spreads. And so we are a um, sort of a yeast into the kingdom of God. We cause the kingdom of God to become everything it's becoming and what it's going to become. And uh, if we don't do it, God will raise somebody else that will. But it's going to be done. It is done. Praise God. I love that prayer that says, Jesus said, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, that's so important. We have to forgive, right? We can do it in God's strength. Always make sure that when you Check your heart every day. Make sure you don't have any ought. You're not holding a grudge. 
You're not hating your brother. You're not maligning him. You're not speaking against her or him. Uh, make sure that you have no root of bitterness because a root of bitterness will spring up out of nowhere at the worst possible time and whereby it defiles many. So we have to make sure our hearts are right because the heart is exceedingly wicked. And David said, check my heart, O Lord, and make sure there is no evil or wicked thing in me. So we do that on a daily basis. We want to do that. We don't want to be that kind of yeast in the world that makes the world worse. We want to be that thing that's in, in the kingdom of God that causes it to rise. Praise God to rise up. Um, Isaiah 60, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen, and the glory of the Lord has come. Gross darkness covers the earth, and a great darkness the people, but my light will shine upon you, and Gentiles will come, and kings will come, and bow to the brightness of your dawn. You might say, oh, well, that's talking about Zion. Well, we are Zion. We are spiritual Zion. I don't believe necessarily in the whatever um, doctrine of replacement or anything like that. But we are Zion, just as much as Zion is Zion, the fortress of God. You say, well, that's the Zion's a fortress of God in Jerusalem, uh, the fortress of David. Well, did not he say that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost? And he dwells in us, Christ in us, the hope and glory. Of course, we are the fortress of God, the house of God, whatever you want to call it. A house is a fortress. Did you know that? It's a wall place that you go into to protect yourself. That's what it is. It's, uh, you know, that's exactly what it is. We live in a fortress when we live in a house. And... The tabernacle of God is with men. And so when Christ is in us, when Christ is in us, then we are a fortress, a place of refuge, a hiding place. And we're in him and he's in us, so uh, he's our hiding place. He's our fortress. He's a very present help in times of trouble. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be rescued, shall be saved. We don't have to go anywhere to run anywhere unless he tells us to go and run and do whatever. But the power of God's in us. And this is what we really need to know. That, that he is closer to us than our breath. Is that not scripture? Have I not been quoting scripture to you? So this is who we are in the earth. Praise God. We are a light unto the Gentiles. Uh, people, let, let's say Gentiles are a type of people that don't know the Lord. And, uh, and kings, rulerships will bow to the brightness of your dawn. We'll have the answers. We have the answers. And we will have the answers in a time where there is great darkness and there is no answer. Because believe me, when, when there is ignorance in the world, there is darkness in the world. Um, during the time, the, day, the medieval days, okay, the reason why it was so dark is because the word of God was being restrained. It was being chained uh, the Bible was literally chained uh, in a fortress of the enemy, really. Um, in some ways, maybe it was kept, but it was also being restrained and kept from the people. But when it got into the hands of the people, we came out of the dark ages. Praise God. The enemy could not stomp out God's word. He could not keep it from uh, being a yeast in the earth. And the knowledge of his glory, the earth, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of his glory as the waters cover the sea, with the knowledge of his glory as the water covers the sea. Praise God. So the word of God now, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people, the word of God is all over. I mean, look at the internet. You have scripture after scripture. I don't know about you. I don't know about your Twitter. But in my Twitter, I see scripture all the time just coming up, coming up. If I look at my Facebook, uh, when I used to be able to see other people in my Facebook, I don't even know if I exist on Facebook or I'm just a page. I know people have to come and find me. But um, 
that's just our Facebook page. It's N-W-P-O-U-R-I-N-G, uh, Facebook.com. I think you can find it like that. But anyway, uh, Instagram. I mean, God's Word is all over the place. And I love it. I mean, I don't know what it's like to be a person maybe that's not a Christian, but if you have a lot of followers, surely you're going to be seeing Scripture. I see it like one every, you know, every page roll up, at least, a Scripture. Um, But the earth is being filled with the knowledge of His glory. And wherever His word is preached... The glory is very close. <laughs> the, the glory, it's the glory. Jesus is the glory of God. Praise God. He is the word made flesh. What is the glory? The glory is the what emanates from you. You know? Um, and all that it, it is. It's really interesting about what glory is. Of course, when we look at the sun, the sun in and of itself has all these gases And then it emanates the rays that come out of it. And those rays feed the earth. They minister to the earth. They warm the earth. And because of that, seed shoots out of the ground. And then we have fields of flowers and fields of wheat. And and the earth thrives under the rays of the sun. And that is what the glory of God is. It is what emanates from him, what uh, grows and lives because of him. That's the glory of God. So we're, we're the glory of, the, of God. Hallelujah. The scripture says that the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens and the earth declare the glory of God, just because of their existence, really. So that's the glory of God. And we can have the glory of God resting on us, meaning that that the rays of his love and the rays of his power and the rays of his anointing flows out of us and brings life wherever we go. If we're filled full of him, filled full of his Holy Spirit, just like Stephen was filled full of the Holy Spirit of God. He was praying for people. People were receiving miracles. Uh, He preached an incredible word. He was there. He was appointed so that the uh, the apostles could study the word of God, so they wouldn't have to deal with the, you know, distribution to the saints. And so Stephen was appointed along with six others to take care of tables, and and yet he was filled full of the Holy Spirit and full of the word of God. It was so powerful. His short life was so so powerful, and. His martyrdom changed the face of Christianity. It completely just changed everything. Even his um, garments, the garments of those that that killed him were thrown at the feet of Paul, who was going to become was going to become a super apostle. So and and we read his his epistles till this day. So praise God, the glory of God goes on and on and on and on. And it can in our life too, if we just let him be himself in us. And lay down our our own self. Let him animate in us everything that we were supposed to be. Before the foundations of earth. What he designed us to be. When he designed peach trees in his mind. They were in his mind. They were in his heart before he designed the peach tree. And now uh, just making one fruit tree out of one fruit tree of this kind and one fruit tree of that kind, we have hundreds of thousands of millions of fruit trees that have lived and died on this earth. And what we hold in our hand, that peach, that apple, that orange, whatever, what we hold in our hand was there from the very beginning. And that is the glory of God. Think about it. Because it goes on and on. He's an eternal God. And when he created us, he had eternity in mind. Don't worry if all of your hopes and dreams don't come true in this lifetime. You were created with eternity in mind. If it's from God and you've done everything you can in your power, in your own power, which really, he doesn't doesn't require us to rely upon our own power, okay? 
But if it's still in you and, and you're 90 years old, you're not done. You buy a long shot. You have all of eternity to complete the dream. And believe me, the seed never looks like the actual thing on a harvest day. It, it, you know, the whole, you've got that whole tree, the branches, the leaves, and then the fruit, the flowers, the blossoms. And then the flower. And all that came from that seed. That's why God says that his word is like a seed. And faith is like a seed. It does not look like what it's going to become. It takes faith and the mind of Christ to see it how God sees it. And so that's why we need to put on the mind of Christ. Casting down all thoughts and exaggerations casting down all thoughts uh and ex how's that go casting down all thoughts and imaginations that exalt itself above the knowledge and the wisdom of god and bring every thought into the captivity of the obedience of christ we have the power to do that we can do that you can say this thought stops right here it will not continue it will not go on it doesn't come from my father. My father, my father has thoughts towards me that are for good and not for evil. He has a plan and a purpose for my life. Praise God. I'm a royal diadem in the palm of his hand. Everything that says anything different, and I don't care if they're your earthly parents, I don't care if they're your school teacher, your favorite coach, if it does not breathe life into your destiny, then it's not from God because he is the one that gives us life. He is the one that gives us breath. And if we listen to what he has to say about us, then everything else that is said about us has no power and we should never give it power. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. He is so awesome. He is so powerful. He is so good. His word, what he declares, what he has to say about you is what stands. That's what lasts. But if we listen to the lies of the enemy, if we get all tangled up in something somebody said about us, and we allow that to keep us from being who we are in Christ Jesus, then those rotten lies of the enemy that, that come from the enemy, because remember I said that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He was a liar from the beginning. His, he is the father of lies. And that's what he does. And if we listen to his lies, then this will defeat us. So if he uh, uses them in our mind by a bird in the air, you know, a, a spiritual by spiritual means, which he does every day, he tries to. Or if he is able to influence a mouthpiece that's able to broadcast however that mouthpiece uh Whatever that mouthpiece has the power to broadcast. Some people, they only have that power that's in their home. Some people uh, are able to get on television, on uh, YouTube. They're able to say terrible, horrible things about people. And the whole world is able to hear it. But it doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter because God is bigger than that. And I feel like, and I know this to be true, that wherever those seeds were planted and whomever the lies of the enemy were planted first of all those people that heard those things they have a choice whether they're going to listen to God or listen to man they have a choice whether they're going to have a tell bearer's words land on the inside of them and begin to grow a lie and to begin to grow a life a dead life really of its own and bear fruit that is rotten okay so we've got to be careful what we hear. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. You know, so we're either going to repeat the lie, become the lie, and, and have nothing to show for our lives and bring judgment on ourselves too because we have to be careful what we say. We're either tearing God's work up or we're uh, tearing up the devil's work. And we've got to make sure what side we're on. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, 
Glory be to God. I woke up this morning and I've been battling, battling, warring, warring, and I felt a breakthrough. I felt a breakthrough. And you know, this is what it reminded me of. It reminded me of the story of Daniel. When Daniel began to pray, he was repenting and he was praying uh, for his people, concerned about his people. And he was concerned about a vision he was given. And Daniel fasted and he was waiting on the Lord. And for 21 days after this prayer, finally, an angel came to him and said, Daniel, from the very first day that you began to pray and you set yourself to pray for your people, I was sent to you. But the prince of Persia hindered me for 21 days. The prince of Persia so the prince of Persia hindered me for 21 days. And he says, now I'm now another warring angel, Michael, the warring angel, is coming to take care of him. So there's wars in the heavenlies. There's a war in the heavenlies. Okay. Now, now where we're at right now, Jesus has cast out, he has come to destroy the work of the enemy. And like I said, the only working or operation they really have any power in is lies, deception, making people believe they have no power in Christ Jesus, uh, keeping from them the truth about spiritual warfare. We know spiritual warfare really does exist, so because why would he give us our weapons? Why would he give us the sword of the spirit? Why would we need a sword of the spirit if we didn't do warfare? Why would we need our armor? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. The scripture says, so let me read some scriptures to you about spiritual warfare. Now you might be listening. You go, oh, I know about spiritual warfare. I know about it. Well, I'm going to talk about some things you might know, not know about it, but let me tell you that there, it never gets old. It never gets old until Jesus comes back. It's going to be needed. You're always going to need your weapons of war and make sure your armor is on. And so it's never too much to remind people that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Because we can get in that battle and it's sort of a secondary kind of thing. Like we're really living life. We're going to work. We're going to school. We're you know, we're, we're taking care of our responsibilities in life, whatever it is that we're doing, and we can get so caught up in the day-to-day -day momentum of whatever that we forget that we have an enemy that absolutely hates us. And he wants to keep us from the throne room of God. He wants to keep us out of worship. He wants to keep us out of prayer. He wants to keep us out of a place where we could receive revelation. He wants to keep us sick. He wants to keep us downtrodden. And so the only way to be able to overcome that is by recognizing, being aware and sober that our adversary is like a lion. Okay, and I'm going to read that scripture if it's in my list here. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, we get caught up in our world, in our life, we forget that we're in a battle. And that battle is... A bunch of lying shadows to obscure our vision and to obscure our seeing and our ability to see. So let's go with these scriptures. Ephesians 6.12 For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. I'm not sure what version this is. Um, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And this, this translation says, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Romans thirteen twelve through 14. The night is almost gone and the day is near. Therefore, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave properly 
as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lusts. Second Corinthians 10.4 For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Uh, this translation, I can't see which one it is. Interesting translation, but I like it where it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Zechariah 4, six. Then he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So the fight, the battle is by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit of God. The gifts that he's given us, the words of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discernment of spirits, discerning of spirits, praise God, by miracles, working of miracles. These are the weapons of our warfare. This is what we've been given to do this battle. And we have got to seek God, to get the mind of Christ, to know how to do this war. Blessed be the Lord God that trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Praise God. You know, that's an interesting scripture. My hands for war, my fingers for battle. Uh, if you've ever shot a gun, you know, there's a certain place where you need to have your thumb and there's a, a certain place where you need to have your trigger finger. And if you're shooting a bow, there's a technique in that. And so he trains our hands for war and our fingers for battle. He gives us the mind of Christ to be able to see through the the enemy's lies. And that's so important. We've got to know God's word in order to see through his lies because his lies are like little whirlwinds that we can get caught up. We can get caught up with that little whirlwind at the marketplace, at work, at, at, the, wor at the work break room. Um, we can get caught up in uh, the lies of the enemy at school, in our homes. Whatever is happening, whatever is going on, these little whirlwinds he wants us to emotionally get caught up in. And so when we have the mind of Christ, when we're in prayer, we have the mind of Christ, we're, we're, we're ready to go. Um, this is why we've got to gird ourselves up and face every day knowing that we need to have the victory to go to the next level. Galatians 5.17 For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. You know, the flesh and the spirit, they war with one another. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. Hmm. You know, the flesh, like it says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, the spirit desires to serve God, to be free and have liberty in Christ, but the flesh wars against that. And usually it is emotions. Usually it's pride, letting our pride get the best of us, uh, talk us out of, you know, publicly proclaiming Christ or, you know, praying for people we're supposed to pray for or stepping up for God, however he wants us to step up for him, to rise in the authority that he's given us and uh, a lot of times people step back from that and they think, oh, they'll just think I'm trying to be somebody. You know, the enemy's favorite line is, oh, you're just trying to be spiritual. Oh, that's from the, that is from the pit of hell. Anyone that ever says, oh, you're just trying to be spiritual, their father is not the father of spirits, the father of lights. God is a spirit, Okay. So when you hear that being said to you or about anyone, know where that's coming from and know that person is needing a uh, cleansed. Do not let it control you. Do not let it stain you or stumble you. You just keep obeying God. You keep believing him. You keep your eyes on him. Don't let the enemy get the best of you and that kind of thing, to keep you, uh, to even cause you to walk in a false humility. Okay, so sometimes pride stumbles us into walking 
in a false humility. And I'll talk about that, that another day. So, 1 Peter 2.11, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust, which wage war against the soul. Second Timothy, Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So, this is, these are scriptures that say we are in a war of flesh and of spirit, but we have the weapons to fight this war. John 16.33 These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage, I have overcome the world. Ephesians 6.13 Which is right after uh, Ephesians 6.12 when I said that I'd like to put this one in perspective. For, the, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against powers, against darknesses, and against spiritual forces of wickedness in high places. Okay, But Ephesians 12, that's Ephesians 12, 13 says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you will be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Okay, then putting on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, you know, have your, go your, your loins girt about with the word of truth, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit. Praise God. So anyway, we are in a war. We are in a battle. Well, Jesus won the war. We are in battles. And if we believe the devil's lies, then we're going to go down with him. But if we believe the word of God, then we're going to go up with him. Okay? So when we have these little things that are happening all around us, that, that are right there in our face, telling us that we're defeated, telling us that we're not making an impact, um, trying to get us in deception, trying to get us in a weak place, becoming depressed and feeling powerless, that's when we really need to press in and declare the word of God and what the Word of God says about us, and what our situation is. We also have to remember that we have been given power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy, Luke 10. We've been given that power, and also that we're seated in high places, far above all of the principalities, the powers of the air. The Bible says pray for all of those that are in authority so that we can live a quiet and peaceable life. The reason why is because these rulerships of darknesses uh, are seeking a place of habitation in order to control uh, and have authority to have influence over schools, over municipalities, uh, over you know businesses that are influential, over the capital, the capital of states, of course, the capital of our nation. Uh, these are all rulerships of darkness that are smaller the smaller minions under uh, the principalities and they are in rank and order and uh, then you have the unclean spirits on the earth that sometimes go rogue and do whatever but they're also operating and influenced by the rulerships of darkness so in the name of Jesus I when I remember I when I feel that a smaller situation um, a lower rank situation that's happening is being empowered by a higher rank authority, demonic authority. It's pretty obvious because um, if God's called you to do something, you know, whatever ministry it is or whatever work it is that his blessing is on and it's influencing people, whatever. And you begin to have these unusual manifestations through uh, things and people around you. This is often influenced by rulership of darkness. It is empowering that circumstance to somehow just break down your life, interrupt you. Um, it could be manifesting through illness. It could be manifesting through other people's behavior. It could be manifesting. And they're just puppets, really. You don't have to get mad at these people because we war not against flesh and blood. The scripture plainly says we do not war against flesh and blood. So when you have these things happening, it's not your neighbor across the street driving you crazy. It's not, uh, you know, every time you want to say, for example, uh, if I do a podcast, then all of a sudden I've got all these street cleaners like an army coming down the street, you know, and you're going, what is going on? And just things like that, just funny things like that. And, uh, but 
when we recognize that it's the invisible world that we're dealing with, it's not flesh and blood that we're dealing with. When you nip it at the bud in the spirit and you take your authority in Christ Jesus and you do warfare and do battle where that battle and warfare really is happening, then it takes care of everything else. And some of these people, uh, when you when you come against these things, some of these people in your life uh, are, when you have victory in that, they're being eased from torment. They're being eased from attacks of the enemy. The, the man over his home, his wife being the weaker vessel um, is the target of the enemy, not usually him or maybe one of the children. And so that's why we pray and give special honor to the weaker vessels, right? Uh, and cover them in prayer with um, grace and um, or those that are infirmed, you know, those that are having a, a struggle, they have struggles, we pray over them uh, because the enemy may very well be bombarding them because they can, so we got to pray over them so that they will not become or used as an instrument of uh, distraction. And that's all that it is. So, this is where, when we have the mindset, when we have the mind of Christ, uh, we're able to walk in love, walk in compassion, walk in grace. Now, believe me, I need to hear this just like anyone else. Walk in grace, walk in mercy, walk in compassion, and realize that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're actually absolutely fighting principalities, powers, dominions, and mights, and wickednesses in high places. It's just the bottom line. So what do we do? We get into the Word of God, and we get in prayer, and we wait on the Lord, and we get the mind of Christ. And He will begin to show us. He will bring us into that war room, and He will begin. He'll pull that map down. He'll take that pointer, and He'll say this, and this, and this. And you'll go, wow, that's not even... That's not even connected to what, I mean, that's not directly connected to what I'm having to deal with. Yeah, but this is happening because this is happening. And so therefore, that is being inflamed to keep you distracted. It's just, that's how it works. He's, he's been defeated. You know, it's just like when they, when we were fighting with Japan and, and they surrendered, okay, there were people, there were Japanese soldiers that were still fighting in the islands even after they were surrendered, years after, they say, um, because, uh, because they didn't get the word. And see, we've got the word. The word is that Jesus cast out the devil, that he came to destroy the works of the enemy. And that everything is being brought under his feet. Now, who's bringing it under his feet? We're the ones that are expanding the kingdom of God. If we're the ones that are bringing the word, so go into all the world, you know, go to and make disciples of all nations. What happens when we do that? We're submitting, we're bringing those that are submitting themselves to God. And Jesus is resting his feet on the earth. And these things are bowing in submission. So when a, a person gets saved, their household gets saved, maybe their village gets saved, their town starts getting saved because more and more people are getting saved. And they're what? They're submitting. They're bowing to Jesus, to his will. And so that's how it's done. Uh, so the enemy, all he has is lies. And everything we have is the word and his, what Jesus already did. He worked such a great salvation on the cross. And then I'm going to finish with this scripture that says in Isaiah 58, or no, Isaiah 58 is good, but Isaiah, is this a fast that I've chosen, okay, uh, to unloose, to loose the bonds? That's the fast he's chosen. But in other words, if you're going to be religious about something, be religious about loosening bonds and setting people free, okay? But he says, is this the fast that I've chosen? Okay, I keep wanting to go back to that, but this is... 53 and 58 is everything. So all we like sheep 
have gone astray. We've all gone our own way. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised by our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by whose stripes we were healed. That's that great salvation. Praise God that Jesus wrought for us. Hallelujah. So yeah, we make disciples of all nations. Mark verse uh, Mark 16. Go ye into all the world, and these signs will follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils, speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And if they take up any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. This is all that's in our hands to do. If we understand our authority in Christ Jesus, we stop fighting flesh, warring with flesh, and start doing uh, the spiritual warfare, fighting the good fight of faith, binding the enemy and taking authority over the works of the enemy, and pressing on, pushing on, pressing on to the prize, to the mark. Praise God. Pressing through, pressing through. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what we need to do. We need to press on. Let me find one good scripture to finish it for today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter 5, 8, Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Praise God. Be alert. Be aware. And then Ephesians 6.18. Ephesians good. Got to study Ephesians. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Matthew 28. 41. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak quoted that earlier and then Psalm 1832 the God who girds me with strength and makes my way blameless he makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places he trains my hands for battle so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze praise God and then Ephesians 6 13 17 this is it Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace because, in addition to that, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praise the Lord. So um, be blessed and be strengthened and remember it's not what you see that's in front of you. It's the operators that are operating behind it that you're really dealing with. So take your authority in Christ Jesus and overcome the enemy. Amen? So until we meet again, God bless.
This is Remnant Nation Radio.